My girlfriend just gave birth to our first child. I know I'm not the biological father, and I revealed I knew as soon as she gave birth. Plus small update. I'll try to keep this short because I'm planning to go to a bar soon. I found out when she was about 6 months along. This guy, Brian, approached me at my work. Are you Sarah's boyfriend? I said yeah, and asked what he wanted. He said he was sorry, but that he had slept with her, and swore he didn't know that she was with someone, I don't believe that. He then pulled out his phone to show the texts between them. They had been sleeping together, or linking up, for at least a year. Then she found out she was pregnant, and they came to an agreement to just pretend the baby was mine. In return, she wouldn't lose her perfect life, and he wouldn't be responsible for a baby. I knew it was weird. We had been having problems trying for a baby, and all of a sudden, she got pregnant so easily. But he explained that he had been thinking about it, and he recently became a Christian. He said that he couldn't live his life knowing that I was living a lie, while his child didn't know their real father. So yeah, I told him I'd keep in touch, and to not say that he said anything just yet. I've had a lot of time to think but ultimately, I decided to wait until she gave birth. To hurt her in her most vulnerable moment. I'll spare the details, but she went into labor, baby was born, and was taken to the NICU to be monitored for a bit. What should have been a beautiful moment of me holding my baby was the most heartbreaking time of my life. Just knowing he was not mine hurt me. Once she was sewn up and comfortable, I started packing up my stuff to leave. She asked where I was going, and I just told her. I know I'm not the baby's father. You can act all shocked, but I know. Just ask Brian to come, I'm positive he'll sign the birth certificate. Then I left. She's been calling my phone over and over, even sending texts as I type this, and has even gotten her sister to call me a few times. It was hard pretending these last few months, but I think I'm satisfied. I feel really really heartbroken though. I was planning to propose to her on the day our baby was born. I was gonna make her the happiest woman ever. Oh well, I'm going to go get very drunk now. Now for the top advice before reading the update. I did a sigh of relief when I saw you're not married to this woman. Take power from that. You can move on much easily. Same. Good riddance. I'm so sorry. No one deserves this. The crap she pulled is absolutely evil. It will get better with time, and you will be happy again with someone who deserves you. Go ahead and let her and Brian deal with this situation on their own. Shoot, I'm relieved he didn't sign the birth certificate. Some states consider him the actual father at that point. Seriously. And he should be glad they aren't married and living in my state. In my state, if you're married, the father automatically goes on the birth certificate, even if baby isn't his. My state requires a year of separation before divorcing, but my ex-husband and I did not legally separate until we had already been apart for almost a year and dating new people. I got pregnant three years after we separated, but we were still legally married. I had to pay a lawyer and go through a lengthy process to get his name off the birth certificate and get the real father's name put on there. It was a hassle. Get a DNA test just to be 100% sure the child isn't yours. But you did the right thing leaving her, now make sure you have the text from Brian so she can't twist the narrative. You also need the DNA test so she can't put you on child support, because if you're in the USA, it'll be hell to get you off of it, once the courts deem you the father. I'm like 110% sure that is not my kid just from looking at him, but I'll get the test. I get that, but it just to be on the safe side. You wouldn't want to find out 10 years later that it's yours, and you missed out on all the time and moments with the child. It won't hurt having something definitive that says you aren't the father might want to get a DNA test first. Has this happened to my parents? My mom was messing around with my dad's friend. My dad knew. My brother was born, and my dad divorced my mom. My brother was beat red baby. My mom is half native, and her lover was Mexican, so everyone concluded based on my brother's looks that he must be the other guy's son. Five years later, my brother is sporting fair skin and blonde hair. They did a paternity test, and he was my dad's after all. Took another six years for my dad to get custody. He's 35 now and looks like our dad's doppelganger. Yes, the red skin was a covert boomer racist assumption about indigenous skin. People actually believed that nonsense in the 80s. Damn, I wish I could give you a hug and buy you a drink if that's what you want. I can't even tell you how sorry I am. Thanks man. Appreciate it. Now for the mini update. Head hurts, but I'm home and safe. I wasn't really expecting this to gain as much traction as it did, but I'll clear up a few things. Brian is going to be in the baby's life if it's his. I don't care what anyone says, I'm sure the kid isn't mine. I'll go get tested, but me and Brian have been in contact since last night, and there isn't a doubt at my mind. For those of you calling me a psychopath or whatever, I don't really care. You'll all forget about this post in a day anyway, while I'll have to live with this crap for the rest of my life. What I did wasn't amazing, but I don't care. All I ever did was treat her amazing, and this is how she pays me back. If you think this is fake, go read something else.
doesn't matter to me. Last story. Update. I found out my 31 male, ex-wife 27 female, cheated on me while she was pregnant. Now she says I'm emotionally manipulative because I'm cold and distant during custody switches. Original post. I found out my now ex-wife had been cheating on me last year when she was 6 months pregnant. The affair happened before and during the pregnancy, she had reasons and excuses and didn't want to get a divorce. She wanted to stay together and do couples therapy. I told her to go ahead and get therapy, but cheating was a deal breaker for me so we got a divorce. The house was mine before we got married, so she moved back in with her parents, who had enough room to set up a nursery and give my ex the guest room. We agreed to an even 50-50 split of custody, my wife has our daughter Sunday to Wednesday, and the original plan was for her to drop her off at daycare on Wednesday morning. And my nanny picked her up around noon and brought her back to my house where my daughter would stay with me until Saturday night or Sunday morning, depending on what worked best for everyone. Then my ex said she thought the daycare was misplacing some things she was sending in for her to bring to my house because a few times our daughter came home short some bottles or without her binky. So, X said she wanted to drop our daughter off at our house directly to make sure all of her things get to me. So, she started picking her up from daycare on her breaks and dropping her off here. I work from home Wednesdays and Fridays, even so, I'm working. When X began dropping off Nadine at my house, it was normally about 12.30. My daughter's nanny, a nice old lady from Barbados in her late 50s or 60s, was the one to answer the door for my ex and take my daughter and her things since I was in my office working. X began saying she wanted to speak to me directly when she dropped off. She said she felt like she was unloading a lot on the nanny and didn't want her to forget to tell me anything. I would be lying if I said I didn't still have some resentment and anger towards my ex. I don't want my daughter to see that though, so when I talk to my ex, I try to be as emotionally even as possible, just talk about the things that pertain to my daughter, and no more. At today's drop off, Nadine had a dirty diaper, so her nanny took her upstairs to change her. My ex asked me how I was doing, and I told her I was fine, thank you, and then began to walk back to my office, she sees herself out as she used to live there. As I was walking away, she says, you know, I'm getting really sick of your what you're doing. I didn't even get a chance to ask her what it was she was talking about, when she just started freaking out, saying I was emotionally manipulating her by being cold and distant, that she shouldn't be punished forever for her mistakes, and how me hating her is the same as me hating my daughter. I let her finish yelling, and then told her to leave. I think my best bet is to go no contact with her again and not see her for drop-offs anymore. But I was looking for some other perspectives or opinions on the matter if you might have them. Head it, I got a paternity test once I found out she cheated. My daughter is mine. Now for the top advice before reading the update. It appears that your ex is hoping for a reconciliation, trying to find ways to see you. Since that's not an option for you, returning to no contact is best. You'll need to get over her betrayal, enough that you can be in the same room with her for your daughter's sake, but nothing more is required. I can still be in the same room and be cordial to her, I just don't want to make small talk and be friends. Please just continue to do this. I came from a situation where one parent cheated on the other that led to divorce. Cheater parent was much like your wife. However in my situation, the other parent constantly took the bait and it led to some very big fights. Fights they continued having well into my 20s had to prohibit them from even speaking to each other at my wedding. It really screwed up my ability to handle myself in any level of conflict for a very long time. The approach you are taking is great. Don't take her bait. She will get bored and find a new target. I don't know how no contact would work with even sharing of your daughter's time. Definitely as little contact as possible. Continue being a stone wall. You could say, you and I don't need to have an emotional connection. All we do is handle business with our daughter. Yeah, I mean no contact aside from things that have to do with our daughter. There is a free online program called Talking Parents at TalkingParents.com. Courts utilize it in contentious family law cases. It's essentially an email chain. The benefits are the time the message is sent is recorded, the time the message is seen is recorded, and messages cannot be edited or deleted. If you ex's excuse for modifying your parenting plan is that she wants to talk to you about your daughter, this is the solution. In the event you need to defend yourself, protect your reputation or protect your daughter, you just press print. Note, she isn't coming to your house to talk to you about your daughter. She wants to stop feeling like the bad guy, either by getting your forgiveness or provoking you into an emotional response etc. You haven't taken the bait yet. Good on ya. Keep that up. My worry here would be her starting to lie and tell people you're being emotionally harming or mistreating your daughter because you don't want a relationship with her outside co-parenting. Yes, that's what I'm worried about too. I want to keep things as civil as possible. 
Put a camera in the area by the door and have it record audio plus video and tell your ex that you're now recording the drop-offs and pickups. If she has another outburst like that, you'll have it as proof you're not doing anything wrong. And now for the update. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who took the time to comment their support, sympathies, and advice. I didn't get a chance to respond to all the comments, but I read and appreciate them all. There were so many great suggestions. Someone suggested a website called Talking Parents, which I believe is going to be a great resource for my ex-wife and I. The thing I need to keep reminding myself is that, in 5 or 10 years, the negative and betrayed feelings I have for my ex-wife will most likely fade, but a hostile relationship between the two of us will impact our daughter forever. Because of this, I sat down with my ex-wife and had a recorded conversation about our situation. I was very open and honest with her. I told her that I still had negative feelings towards her as my ex-wife, but as the mother of my child, I would always treat her civilly and respectfully, but we had to have boundaries. I told her that we are going back to the original plan where she drops her off at the daycare Wednesday mornings, and my nanny picks her up in the afternoon. We're going to communicate through the website which items should be sent home with her, so the nanny can double check to make sure she has everything. My ex-wife isn't happy, I think she was coming to my house in hopes of reconciliation, but I told her respectfully, but in no uncertain terms, that it was never going to happen but that I would love to evolve our relationship as awesome co-parents to an amazing little girl and maybe one day, friends. Again, thank you to everyone who took the time to reply to my post. This community has been a wonderful resource for me. I hope you all have a wonderful night. You're a stand-up guy. I think you handled that like a legend. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Not only a stand-up guy but an awesome dad. I'm glad to see that those communication websites and tools are working for you. They're great because they protect both parties by making everything transparent. I don't know if this was mentioned previously, but have you had a paternity test? You don't need your ex's permission to get one. It's a simple cheek swab for your daughter and you. Something to think about, especially due to the infidelity. Even if you plan to raise the child as yours regardless of paternity, knowing the truth will be important for her medical history and it's information your daughter is entitled to have. That sort of delusion doesn't go away overnight. Expect her to weaponize the kid. That's why I'm trying to cover all of my bases, by staying civil and recording all communication. Yes, this. But you're doing all the right things. Don't let up, at all. She's immature and vindictive, she's angry that you walked away, with your head held high. Be aware the chances are high she's going to smear you to everyone who will listen. Also pay attention to signs of parent alienation, when the baby is old enough to understand. Your ex is petty and embarrassed that she messed up a good thing with you. Could you imagine going from being a married woman to being an ex-wife and now living in a guest room in their parents' house? It's easier to blame you than face her BS, be accountable, and responsible. Keep up the great work. Navigating the whole co-parent thing will have its ups and downs, but hold to the attitude you wrote here no matter what. Keep yourself clear, hopefully things will go as smoothly as possible, though there may be setbacks and crappy times ahead. Your ex has issues. Things won't get better overnight, and she may get worse before she gets better. That kind of selfishness can be hard to overcome. Cheaters are disgusting, but at the end of the day, you have a lovely daughter and so many wonderful times ahead with her. I'm sorry for the pain you've gone through, wishing you happiness in the future. I also ended a marriage with a cheater. Turns out I didn't know what I was missing until I had a partner who actually loves and respects me. There are decent people out there. Cheating is disgusting, but it doesn't define the person. People are defined by their behavior among other things, because that's part of what makes up who we are. Treating someone you supposedly love and swore vows to, with so little respect, love and care, speaks volumes about the cheater. Especially when you have or are building a life together. It doesn't mean they can't change and grow. Some do. Others double down on saying it doesn't define them or it was just a mistake, as if it wasn't a deliberate series of decisions.